So yesterday, the latest update for The Division 2 launched, and well, let's just say that it came into this world kicking and screaming. Multiple delays more than doubled the initial downtime expectations, and despite some of the new additions, such as the 4K 60fps upgrade for next-gen consoles and the optimization reductions, the overall reception by the community is really quite mixed, and that's what I want to take a look at today. But before we begin today's video, if you haven't yet smashed that sub button for intensive Division content, please do so. And don't forget to ring the bell to never miss a future upload notification from my channel. You can also really help out the channel by watching this entire video, rating and sharing the video, and of course, leaving a comment. Let's go. everybody, it's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and welcome back to another Division 2 upload. And before we begin today's video, a couple of items I wanted to mention. Number one, I hope you are all still doing well out there and my best wishes for you and yours. And number two, this channel has been growing extremely quickly in terms of sub counts and views. And I have you, my viewers, to thank for that. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Okay, so diving into today's discussion, and of course, Title Update 12.1 went live yesterday, and at this point, it has been misbehaving like a spoiled brat, and it really just needs a swift kick in the ass. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to spend the next however many minutes this video goes on ranting about the issues, as it wasn't all bad, but I would be remiss if I did not say that to my knowledge, this is the sloppiest update installation I have ever seen in this franchise's nearly five-year existence. So a quick recap here. The initial downtime announcement for Title Update 12.1 was three hours, which if you think about it is a pretty standard time for Massive to turn off the game, install those updates, and then flip the switch back on. Then we got a tweet from the official Division Game account stating that they were extending the installation by a further three hours. Okay, so bugs happen, issues are discovered, and they wanted to get them right before flipping the switch. But then we got a second announcement that TU 12.1 needed a further two hours downtime. And personally, this is where I really started to worry. I mean, the patch sizes themselves weren't that large, indicating that there wasn't a whole lot of new content included in them. And at this point, we were looking at nearly eight hours to get a sub five gig update live and fully functional. Moving ahead, and once TU 12.1 finally went live, I, along with many of you, started to notice some serious performance issues with the game. So let me get this section out of the way, and then we can try to end this video with the positive aspects, okay? All right, so for me on PC and PC players in general, I noticed that I started to encounter severe stuttering, but not all the time. I mean, in general, I would see it during combat, and this is background footage I recorded this morning. And if you watch it really closely, you'll see it happen every now and then. It looks like I've lost total control of my mouse, but actually I'm going through this stutter effect and trying to compensate with the mouse to come out of it with my character at least somewhat aimed in the right direction. I mean, in terms of how severe these stutters are, they literally freeze my game for a matter of seconds, which on heroic or legendary difficulty, usually means insta-death. Now luckily, I don't even have it as bad as many PC players that are reporting hard crashes and are literally not able to even play the game at all. I've heard rumors that activating DX12 seems to help, although I have always used DX11, and others have posted that starting full screen, switching to borderless, and then back again is fixing it, but again, this is producing mixed results. Anyways, the official Division Game Twitter account posted earlier this morning that they are investigating the issue and are requesting that PC players send them their DX Diag reports to the support team. For those of you that are interested, I will leave a link in the video description if you want to assist them. Jumping over to current gen console owners, and again, this is a mixed bag of results. Now, I posted a community thread over on my YouTube channel asking how players have fared with this update and the list of issues they have is long. I have reports of PS4 owners losing all their existing caches, including exotic caches, and several reports of players' games completely missing on their console hard drives. There are also posts about varying patch sizes, from the original 5 gigs all the way up to 67 to 70 gigs, which would indicate that the entire game was being re-downloaded. Now on the flip side, 
Xbox owners, at least from the feedback that I have received, saw very few issues, if any. Some of the other items either noticed by me or others are that the Magnus League is still overlapping with the current global event and recording burned enemies and Black Tusk headshot kills. Also for me, when I logged in on PC, the game told me that I had the Leon Kennedy vanity items waiting for me in the stash, but when I looked there, it wasn't there. I also never saw the customary exclamation mark in my vanity items indicating that I had new apparel in my inventory. It literally took a friend of mine telling me what grade of items they were, like high-end or superior, and then me looking through my vanity items piece by piece until I found the RPD outfit and was able to equip it. I mean, it was there, but really buried, and it made it difficult to find what was advertised as this login reward. Also, why is this Leon Kennedy Resident Evil vanity set not listed with the others in the event is beyond me. Now, further items I have personally noticed are that those status effects from the headshot clouds are really hit or miss as to when or if they will damage a reanimated target. Sometimes it will burn them down in a matter of seconds while others will walk into those clouds and nothing happens. And this makes the daily reanimated challenges even more tedious. Also, for those of us that like to use the Artificer Hive with our shield builds, I have personally noticed that when the Hive repairs the shield, it is now depleting those Hive charges, even though it remains on my back. And this is contrary to the way it has always functioned. And I want to note that I have not seen it mentioned anywhere in the patch notes. Okay, so let's switch gears and jump over to some good news. And for PS5 and Xbox S and X owners, the transition over to 4K 60 FPS has really been a success. If anything, these agents have been the shining light of Title Update 12.1. As while it has really hurt the rest of us, it has greatly enhanced their experience with the game. I've also received several reports that sounds are more audible, especially ambient and weather related. Now, I am truly happy for any of you that have these platforms, as you are now getting a chance to experience the game closer to what we get on PC. I mean, this game has some serious graphics on full ultra and looks amazing, especially when inclement weather is incoming. To finish up this video, I'd like to ask a couple of general questions. One for you as owners of The Division 2, and the other is directed at the studio itself. So first up, how has your experience been with this update? I mean, I'm truly interested to read your feedback in the comments section. The good, the bad, the average, please list it all out and let's keep it professional. Now, my second question is towards the studio and it has to be what the hell happened and who is fixing it? Now, as I mentioned before, as a day one original division game agent, I have never seen an update implementation as rocky as the one I experienced yesterday. Eight hours to get this relatively small patch installed seems really excessive to me. In addition, I'd like to know who is now in charge of the technical side of this game. In the past, we had Thylander, Drew, Bruce, Nikki, Trick, and even McKenzie, who, by the way, is no longer at Massive and now at Rockstar North. But now, I don't have any idea who is handling the X's and O's of the coding for this game. Now, from what I have seen, the entirety of the old crew has now been reassigned to other projects. And that leaves us division faithful with what? What does the future hold for us? And I'd also like to know who is now steering this ship. I'm going to end this one right here. And as always, I'm looking forward to reading your feedback in the comment section below. If you haven't yet done so, please smash that sub button for intensive division content and ring the bell to receive those future upload notifications. If you liked the video, rate it with a thumbs up, if not with a thumbs down. Links to support my content creation outside of YouTube include Patreon and Teespring, both in the video description. Follow me on Twitch for weekly division streams at twitch.tv. Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter for all my latest posts concerning most things gaming related. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.